Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, I have a story for you of a vengeful politician. I know, right? I thought, you know, politicians, the people we are literally giving the keys of the country to, were just supposed to be great old people. Just wanting the best for their people. I mean, their name is literally public servants. Well, gee shucks, turns out some of them ain't so good after all, if you can believe that. In Sin City, a prominent man from a prominent family, Robert Tellis, Clark County Public Administrator, next up the White House, he had a habit of, well, I mean, it's, it's Las Vegas, what, what is he supposed to be like, not be corrupt, come on! And when an investigative reporter started writing about some of Mr. Tellis's misdeeds, and there were a few, well, didn't said reporter end up just on the ground outside his house in September 2022. Before we get into it, please subscribe to see two new crime videos every week on Tuesdays and Fridays. But now, we have a story of quite the character, and it's an ongoing story. So let's give it a go. So, Las Vegas, you know, the city of vice, the city of secrets, the movie casino, etc, etc. You motherfucker, you! A city where you think an investigative reporter would be a busy man, and one Jeff German certainly was. Jeff was an investigative reporter for the Las Vegas Review Journal, a paper of record in Las Vegas. And Jeff, he had the chops, the experience. He was a veteran journalist, smart and fearless. Jeff was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in 1953. And that is exactly where he began his journalism career. He would later move to Vegas and end up writing for the Las Vegas Sun, covering organized crime, politics, and the court system. And he covered a number of big ol' big booty stories, making a name for himself, and he had the books and the podcasts too. In 2010, Jeff began working for the Las Vegas Review Journal, continuing his investigations into the see the underbelly, or maybe see the overbelly of Las Vegas. Now let me tell you something for free, he wasn't scared of nothing. What, what, what is the involvement, if any, of the mob in Las Vegas today? Uh, to be honest, I think it's pretty limited right now. I mean, a lot of that went away after uh, Anthony Spalaccio was murdered back in, the, in, in, in the, outside of Chicago back in 86. Um, Chicago basically kind of withdrew and you had other maybe you had, you had other crime families here and people were still doing a little loan sharking and and there's probably some of that going on illegal bookmaking but um, for the most part uh, Sam it's 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 a lot different now I mean he was often his close friends said mischaracterized as an unapproachable hard-nosed journalist who only cared about that case and part of that was true but to those who really knew Jeff German, he was, you know, under that tough exterior, he was known as being just a very kind, thoughtful, generous person. But, um, it was this video, captured in May of 2022, that would lead to 69-year-old Jeff German's violent death. This video, as hard as it is to make out, shows a politician by the name of Robert Tellis in a car with one of his staffers, Roberta in a very inappropriate uh, position, you might say, and I will say it. So what, uh, you know, led to the alleged violent confrontation with, with a veteran investigative reporter and, uh, and, and a well-known politician, Clark County Public Administrator, no less? Well, first, let's get into who exactly this public administrator was. Robert Tellis would be described by some as a hard-working, compassionate person. By some, but not by all. In 2022, Robert was 45 years of age, a father of three, and had been elected to office in 2018. He had a fair few troubles uh, along the way, though. The public administrator, Robert Tellis. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing real good. Tell us about yourself. So uh, I was elected to the office of the Clark County Public Administrator um, and uh, started my role a couple of years ago. Uh, a lot of folks don't know that the Clark County Public Administrator is a, a safeguarding organization. We also administer estates. So when, when folks pass away in Clark County and family can't be immediately found, the coroner refers the case to us 
so that we can get to the home, um, protect the assets that are in the home, and do our search for the family. I want to know about you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> about you, then we could sure, talk sure. about Sure, absolutely, you absolutely. Robert Tellis grew up in El Paso, Texas, into a family embedded in local politics. His great uncle and grandfather, after returning from World War II, exerted great influence on the town. Even Robert's own father, Raymond, would serve two terms on the El Paso City Council before his career ended in flames, charged with conspiracy to, like, pay for votes and um, fraud. So kind of some of this maybe corruption kind of, you know, dripped true, you might say. I keep saying that. But that never stopped Bobby, big Bobby over here. You know, he, he was a determined guy and, you know, he would leave El Paso, he would move to Denver before eventually setting in Las Vegas in 2002 with his first wife. And together, uh, him and his wife would have a daughter while Robert was working as a HVAC technician and he also worked in, in Kmart as well. He had two jobs. Robert and his first wife, Tanya, they would divorce in 2008, but it was like an amicable enough divorce. Um, she would later say she never saw him be physically aggressive or anything like that, um, you know, a bully, shit like that. No, he was, he was grand. He changed. And shortly after, Rob turned his attention to law and to politics, two professions which are just like ding ding for decent folks. Now, one thing to note is that while attending UNLV's Boyd School of Law, he was accused of inappropriately touching another student. But nothing ever really came of that. It's just, you know, it's a little spice there for the story, I guess. And so he graduated with a law degree in 2014 and began operating Accolade Law, a small firm that focused on estate planning. And he was good at it being named Nevada Legal Services Pro Bono Attorney of the Year in 2014. Well, look at you. By the way, while there at Accolade Law, Rob got sent a cease and desist letter from an employee. Seems he, as the cease and desist states, was expressing romantic feelings for her, hugging, kissing of the something, and touching her butt. And she did not appreciate this one iota. And so Robert uh, tells his uh, political career, it began in 2019, well he, he won the election in 2018, being elected Clark County Public Administrator, being elected to that position in that office. Now the public administrator, um, essentially they deal with somebody dies, they're the part of, you know, the government that comes in to make sure, you know, their state, their houses, whatever is taken care of until an executor is brought in or family is found. You know, somebody dies without any family, the government steps in to, you know, tell somebody can... You know what I mean. And it paid well for Robert too, 120 grand a year. Nice chunk of ch ching He was also active in a number of voluntary organizations. Stuff like the Las Vegas Rotary Club, he was helping out in a foster care agency, stuff like that. And he seemed like a committed guy trying to better, better those around him. You know, exactly what you would want your public servant to be. That was the public image anyway, because underneath, was a different story. See, Robert was known to have a very short fuse. He would, he would like lose the rag at any provocation and it only took a tiny provocation for him to just snap. He made, he became known for this, for his temper, for his outbursts very early in his law career. And he would, over time, rack up complaints from the State Bar of Nevada for abandoning cases. Accolade Law would soon stop answering phone calls, any of that, any of that kind of shit. Complaints started being made about Robert very, very quickly, which he was just able to kind of, you know, don't worry about it. One emergency, Orozco 1787, do you need police, fire, or medical? Yes, hi, can you please send somebody here? My husband is going crazy. He's trying to make us, like, hurt him, hurt him or something. And okay, like, my cat is freaking out. Is? He, he just won't leave us alone. He had too much to drink tonight, and it's just, we're, he, me and my kids are scared. Okay, has anybody been hit or pushed, ma'am? Well, he tried to hurt me, but that was, it's fine. He hasn't touched me since. No, I, okay. I, did, I didn't touch Nobody needs an ambulance? No, no ambulance. Just somebody to come. Now, what's your husband's Thank you so name? much. Rob. Rob? Is it Robert yes. or is it? Yeah, Robert. Rob. Robert. Okay, what is his last name? K-S-T-E-L-L-E-S. -T -E -L -L -E -S. And is he white, black, Hispanic, or Asian? In February 2020, he was arrested at the home he shared with his second wife on domestic battery and resisting arrest charges. 
76. All right, now we've calmed down now that he knows I'm talking to you. Okay. Who would I hit? You just want to take me down because I'm a public official. I did not touch anybody. I haven't hurt anybody. I am just being approached and but you guys just want to take me down because I'm a public official. That's it. I'm, I'm a public I'm, official. I'm sure your supervisors I'm will love to see official. this bloody damage when they I'm see it. I'm a public it. official. This is my home. I haven't hurt anybody. I am a public official. I am not stupid enough to do any of that. There is sufficient evidence to book me right now. There is sufficient evidence to book you right now, yes. You're very certain about that. I am very certain about that. His wife, May, didn't show signs of being attacked, but she was worried he might harm her or her kids after a night out on the booze. She later declined to press charges. First thing you'll need to do is stay out of trouble, and we call that a broad stay out of trouble. No new criminal offenses, no arrests, no citations. You'll have to attend, pay for, and complete the corrective thinking class, which is given online. It costs $60. You also need to post $418. We call this a bail forfeiture amount, but basically it's a fine to you in that amount, $418. And if you do all these things, you'll get the best result that you can get out of a criminal matter, and that is the dismissal. Yes, sir. It's a good deal. Keep it in your hands, out of mine. Agreed? Agreed, Your Honor. Okay. But things really came, uh, you know, to a head for Robert in 2022 when he was seeking a re-election for the public administrator. Because that is when Jeff German started writing a series of exposés about Robert Tellis, exposing Robert for who he really was. Something that would, you know, allegedly cost, cost Robert Tellis his, you know, the election, it would cost him his job, and also cost Jeff German his life. And speaking of uncovering information, folks, this whole video is sponsored, brought to you by Aura. Don't mind me, I'm just your regular, everyday hacker. Steal your identity? Don't mind if I do. Oh no, it's Aura! Aura, big dogs, is an app designed to keep you safe online, protecting you from identity theft. Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the deep web, the dark web, the web in your pants, in places where your private information can be sold. Scammers, those darn hackers, they will sell your email address, your phone number, your social security, your socks, if and when they can get them. Aura has a goo, looks for your information, scanning, and it gives you a heads up if it finds it. And honestly, it probably will. It's happened to me, I've been recommended to change a load of my passwords, which I did. Joke's on you. Oh no! And you know those public websites that you sign up to and then you start getting a load of calls and a load of emails? Well, it turns out they will also sell your information on. So Aura will automatically request removals of your details. And it has a whole host of other features. I'm talking a VPN, real-time alerts of suspicious credit inquiries, malware and virus detection, and password managers. Does it all. So let Aura do the job of keeping you safe online by signing up to Aura today. They will give you a two-week free trial with my link. That is aura.com slash that chapter. And it's got a hell of a high rating, so you know they will take care of you. Once again, use my exclusive link, that is aura.com slash that chapter, and let Aura do the job of taking care of you, and also be horrified by just how much of your personal information has leaked online. But you know what? Thankfully, Aura has got your back. It's giving you an aura of protection and giving you a little kiss on the booty besides. Thank you so much, Aura, for sponsoring this whole video. Now let's get back to it. One of Jeff German's sources was a woman named Rita Reed, and she worked in the Clark County Public Administration's uh, office. She she had worked there for, for years, and she would be second in command to whoever would be elected to run the department, to run the office, which in 2019 was Robert. And she would say that as soon as he took on the job, as soon as he was elected into the position, things went sour very, very quickly. It, it, pretty immediately he was seen as a bully, as someone who bossed people around, as, as, as who, someone who only viewed this job as a stepping stone, and he made that very, very clear to everybody who worked for him that he did not give a single shite about anybody. He had little to no respect for the staff, and he began a lot of unnecessary changes, and his short temper did not work well as a management style, if you can believe that. And then rumors began around the office. See, when COVID hit, Robert sent most people to go and work work from home, and only a handful of people would remain in the office. Robert, a couple of others, 
one of those others was a woman, a female staffer named Roberta. And well, when the rest of the staff came back into the office months and months later, they noticed things had changed in the office and there was, ooh, sexual tension. Highly inappropriate though, and the female employee quickly scaled the ladder in the office also. And so, with the staff being upset about the situation, and not to mention how much of a bully Robert was, with complaints routinely filed against him by his staff, his staff seeing the election down the road and were like, we're not dealing with another four years of this asshole. We need to do something. Rita Reed, his second in command, decided to run against Robert for that position. And it was then that this video was filmed, of Robert and his, I don't know, employee in the back of a car together. Wonder what they're doing. It was Jeff German who was sent this video and then he began writing a series of reports and articles. About our dear Robert. The Clark County Public Administrator's Office has been mired in turmoil and internal dissension for two years, with workers claiming emotional stress, bullying, and favoritism. Robert Tellez, who leads the office, has also faced allegations of an inappropriate relationship with a co-worker, Roberta Lee Kennett. In an interview with Review Journal investigative reporter Jeff Gehrman, Tellus disputed several complaints. What is your uh, reaction to, uh, the, to the allegations from these employees that you have created an, a hostile environment uh, in this office? Yeah, you know, I, I earlier introduced you to, to the other seven team members, and they're folks who have all come with a, a great attitude, and they work hard. And together, them and I, we are, we are what is making the difference with the performance of this office. Um, I've done my best to try to make everyone happy, but again, it's, it's got to be within a certain framework. Um, people just cannot get to do whatever they want, you know. And it, it's unfortunate that, you know, we've got some people who were here from before who were basically trying to railroad me. And again, you, you met those those other folks, you know, they're happy, they're dedicated, and we're just here to do a good job. Tellus, who's up for re-election in the June primary, blames a handful of old-timers for claims about a hostile environment in the office. Again, no matter what type of gestures I try to make to, to smooth things over, to, to make sure that they're happy, you know, they just don't, you know, it's, it's nonstop. And, and again, like I said, it's it's hard for me to to make sure that I am a cheerleader for the folks who are doing really good work when I've got these other folks who are constantly, you know, surveilling me, constantly trying to sabotage the office. But you know, we're doing it. But it's it's hard. And when you, when you hear people raising these allegations about you and your brother and a uh, quote personal relationship that you have, what do you, what, how do you, what do you say to people about that? Well, obviously it's not true. I said, I, I'm, you know, all of my friends, all my family know how much I love my wife. I am about nothing but justice, fairness, and just, just being a good person. And it, it, it sickens me, it destroys me that, that, that somebody would even level like accusations like that. Now, this wasn't a huge story, which shook the foundations of Las Vegas and everybody was like, whoa, mind blown, not at all. This was a story of a small time public official who was, who was known as a bully and was having an inappropriate relationship with one of his staffers. Usually, you know, a couple of days later, a week later, you might quietly see in the news it being reported that he, well, quietly resigned. Although, you know, not with our 2022-2023 nightmare vision, that was not going to happen. A few years ago, when I started my first term, I found a disturbing situation at the office. Unfortunately, I found that there were cases that weren't being closed and hadn't been closed for years. I also found that checks to families were waiting to go out so long that the checks went stale before the families could get them. Tragically, there were even situations where the family members died before they could receive their own checks. But I'm very happy to say that we've turned that all around under my leadership. Robert, of course, denied any of the allegations that were written against him. He was calling it all bullshit. But then the election came. The primaries came, and Robert came third. Rita won. 
he lost the position, and it seemed mainly due to Jeff's exposés. And so the tirades on social media began by Robert, while Jeff kept following the story. Robert, of course, still saying this was all bullshit. He's out to get me. He's got, Jeff's got some vendetta against poor old Robert over here. He also argued for them to stop reporting on this, as Roberta, that's the woman he was allegedly having an affair with, was, and I quote, Roberta has been having heart arrhythmia episodes that are likely linked to this. I am concerned that the release of anything else he can use might further cause severe mental anguish and potentially ill health effects for Roberta. I think we have endured enough. Just, just like, just like, stop it! Would you really write about someone who is ill like this? You fucking monster. And then, in September 2022, while awaiting uh, more public records to be released to Jeff, more public records on the story about Robert Tellis, Jeff German was found dead just outside his home. This was on September 3rd. Well, it's a huge loss for the journalism in Las Vegas community. Those who knew him say Jeff Gehrman's work made an impact across the valley as an established journalist. Investigative reporter Jeff Gehrman was found dead with stab wounds outside his home Saturday morning. He was 69 years old and has covered news in the valley for decades. Now, Metro police say they believe a fight led to Gehrman's stabbing and police are still searching for the suspect, but do say they do have a lead. In a statement from the Review Journal executive editor and senior vice president, Glenn Cook says, quote, Jeff German was as competitive, relentless, trusted, and accomplished as any reporter in Nevada for the past four decades. He broke big stories and developed impactful investigations across every part of Southern Nevada life, from politics to sports, local and state government, to courts and business to organized crime. He will be terribly missed by his family and colleagues, and we are all in shock over his senseless killing. His the public records, by the way, Jeff was, was waiting on to write more stories about old Bobby Telly over here. Uh, he was waiting on the records to be released of communications between Robert and Roberta, the woman he was allegedly sleeping with. Robert was informed of this, that these records would be released the day before Jeff was killed. At about 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, September 3rd, police received a 911 call. Jeff's body was discovered just outside his home. He had been stabbed seven times stabbed to death. He'd been murdered the night before. It is believed to have been an ambush. Footage showed a figure entering Jeff's backyard, and then five minutes later, Jeff walked out of his garage towards where the figure was. Within seconds of Jeff going through his gate into his yard, he was attacked violently. Now Jeff, you know, this, this legendary investigative reporter, he routinely reported on like Math mob stories and stuff in Vegas. So a small-time public official was not the first thing that you know, a small-time public official he was reporting on who was a bit of a scandal. Wasn't exactly the first thing on everybody's mind when he was murdered. Except after the investigation into this beloved and well-known reporter's death, police began releasing CCTV footage of a person who was walking nearby, and also a car. The person, dressed like a gardener, very hard to tell who it was. The car, though, was Robert's wife's car. Robert was taken into questioning four days after the murder. DNA swabs were taken also. Breaking at four, county official Rob Tellis returning home this afternoon in a paper jumpsuit. Sources tell 8 News Now investigators had spent part of the day questioning him about the murder of Review Journal investigative reporter Jeff Gearman. He was released, however, soon after questioning and then arrested soon after he was released, as in the same day uh, after Robert's DNA was found under Jeff Gearman's fingernails. In his home, they also found the outfit the person on CCTV was wearing. A grand jury has indicted former Clark County Public Administrator Robert Tellis for murder. Tellis is accused of killing local investigative journalist Jeff Gearman. Robert Tellis has been charged with first degree murder. No bail for the former Clark County official accused of killing a newspaper reporter. Tellus became emotional during his court appearance this morning. 
His attorney argued Tellis should be given the chance to bond out, but prosecutors say the evidence against Tellis is overwhelming. The likelihood of conviction is high. One of the factors is the gravity of what he did. There is no more serious crime than murder. And this is what he has done in this case. He has pleaded not guilty and denies any of the accusations Jeff was throwing at him. Since uh, being incarcerated, um, Bobby has gone through three lawyers. Three, count of three, before deciding, you know, what, well, let me just do it myself. No one knows Bobby better than Bobby. Um, I, and even though he does have, like, he's a lawyer, has a law degree in practice law, not a criminal lawyer at all. Plus, he'd be out of practice being, you know, public administrator for, like, four years. So, hey? It might be a little bit rusty, but it'll be interesting if nothing else. Currently, he is telling anyone who listens he's being framed that what prosecutors call overwhelming evidence, the clothing the suspect in the CCTV was wearing, it was planted in his house. Of course it was. Of course it was. Did you kill Jeff Gehrman? No, I did not. I don't have proof of who did it, but I know who gained or who would have gained from framing me. How do you explain your vehicle near his home? How do you explain the video of an individual who appears to be you? How do you explain the clothing that was at your house? How do you explain the DNA? As far as the vehicle goes, that there's a vehicle that looks like mine. As far as any other evidence goes, again, as far as what time it may have been planted, I couldn't say. You know, again, I know it's an incredible story, but that is the story. It could appear that you're you're grasping at straws here because you know about the evidence against you. And again, if that's what people want to believe, then they can. But again, I'm telling you the truth. What would you say to people who believe that you are a narcissist who killed a journalist and now you're coming up with another excuse? Again, you know, at, at this point, I'm coming out with this, the truth because I've had to sit and wait for, for some time to, to speak out um, just because my, again, counsel had advised that I shouldn't say anything whatsoever. Framing him like this was framing you him. You just want to take me down because I'm a public official. So sure, your supervisors I'm will love to see official. this bloody camera. Or this was framing him. Rubber is the other kind of person where, of course, nothing's ever his fault. It's fucking the other guy. Get a load of this asshole. Currently, Robert's trial is set for November, and if it's anything like the man himself, it'll be a wild one. And so that is the story of Robert Tellis to date. Uh, so far, anyway, I mean, allegedly the man who was so upset, so fed up with a reporter, he had to go. Unfortunately for Robert, though, that's pretty like, kind of like one of the last we should really go after, because that will be looked into uh, pretty heavily, and all because... He was a bully at work and kind of off banging someone he shouldn't have been. I mean, these series of exposés and reports cost Robert his job. Fair enough. But what Robert did himself could cost him his life. Genuinely, I think this might be the first story of, like, you know, a bullying, shitty politician in history. Mm, yeah, just had a quick think about it. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Thank you uh, so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here watching this solo video with me. It means so much to me as always that you're here hearing me say these words right now because we're at the end of the video, which means you made it. Thanks. Um, yeah, here is always you know, new videos every Tuesday, every Friday, so please subscribe for that and look forward to the next one. Also, check out the, the That Chapter podcast, which is a new episode out every Monday. Check out the Patreon for a load of exclusive videos and early access to videos. And yeah, hopefully I'll have some interesting uh, merch stuff coming soon, which I think will be really, really cool. I don't want to talk too much about it, but I think it could be interesting, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, that kind of wraps up this whole one. So as always, please look after each other and yourselves, because I love you. Mike out.